For any of you who don't know, I am Erin Vickers. I am your new Charlie. And I will drop my email in the chat box just in case anyone doesn't have it. All right, are we ready to get started? I think so. Would you like to share your exciting news with everyone? Sure. I got married last week, so I've been out <laughs> and about. Um, so that that's all the fun stuff that has happened. Um, Congratulations. Just, thank you. And now I am back in the office for a few days and then we're headed to Italy um, at the on the 20th. So then I'll be out for for more days. <laughs> See, lots of lots of congratulations. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you stepping up and helping out with the agenda while I was gone. So you could thank um, Dr. Grisby for doing all that work uh, for us to make sure we're meeting and we're staying on schedule. So thank you again to you and Aaron. I can't believe this meeting was not on the top of your list. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I know, right. I should be living and breathing this, right? <laughs> Well, you know, you guys know I don't love all the attention, so let's just go on to, <laughs> to the main um, topic ahead. Um, so welcome everyone to our May um, Children's Health Technical Advisory Committee meeting. Um, let's just go around um, for the TAC members that are here and doing quick introductions. And if you're not a TAC member and you're just joining, um, if you're an insurance company or anything else, just please put your name in the chat. Just wanted to make sure that everyone knows who the TAC members are. So that way we could establish a quorum and then we could go on to um, our new business and old business. So whoever wants to start it off. I'm I'll Sherry start. Zymar with <laughs> Kentucky PTA. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Courtney Smith. I represent the Kentucky Psychological Association. I'm Donna Grigsby. I represent the Kentucky chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. I'm flipping through to see if there's anyone else that's a TAC member. I have four of you. Okay. So with that being said, We'll have to wait on establishing a quorum. I think we need five. So hopefully um, we'll have another TAC member join us so we could have our full, full quorum and then we could approve the minutes. Um, well, so with that being said, I think we could go ahead and go into old business. I know when we last spoke, we really wanted to hear about really what are the COVID-19 vaccination numbers for kids, any follow-up needs um, that, that you all wanted to share um, with us. So um, Aaron, I don't know if it's a best, if there's a, a strategy that you think that might be helpful. Do you think it's each MCO or maybe we start with DMS and then each MCO go? Um, whatever you think might be beneficial or helpful for this group. Um, that's your preference, but if we, if the MCOs have an update um, and or if the person from DMS has an update, it's whoever wants to go first <laughs> makes me no difference. Sounds good. Does DMS want to go first to kind of set the stage and then we could have MCOs share any follow up? Okay, so I guess we could just go ahead and start with the MCOs. Um, we could start alphabetically or um, we could go ahead and whoever wants to jump in. So I don't have a preference. Um, I don't know if anyone else has a preference. Is Aetna on the line? We can go ahead and just start with Aetna if they're here. Yes. I'm Susan Vickers. I'm the director of quality for the SCAP program at Aetna. Can you all hear me okay? We Great. can. Um, I'm actually new to this to this tech meeting. I know Jennifer um, Knockreiner, our director of quality, is 
prepared uh, a slide and submitted that's that's listed on the website. Do y'all traditionally share your screen or just share your updates? If you have a slide, and I know that there's attachments, um, each of the MCOs have attachments, yes. so it might be best if if you we could see it. Okay, sure. Hold on. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. So let me. I think you're the co-host now, so you could go okay. ahead. I just stopped sharing. You should now Thank be a co-host. You. You're welcome. Wonderful. Okay. Everybody can see my screen okay? And awesome. So I think um, one of the things that we wanted to share was just the, the follow-up on well child appointments and, and visits and, and just coverage for our uh, well child and childhood um, kiddos. We um, have some HEDIS rates here that we wanted to share, you know, our well child visits in the first 15 months of life and vaccines have both increased um, in our, and our dental visits. Um, I think another thing to say is that, that we have some next best action campaigns, uh, providing some text messaging, um, education going on, member incentives going on, um, and, and also our sky high touch CM approach. Um, to hopefully improve these rates and, and really engage and, and get our youth and, and adolescents to the dental, well child and, and adolescent appointments. Um, another slide that we had included um, involves coordinating care for our Sky enrollees. Um, we have a requirement for our newly enrolled Sky members who are coming into out of home care to have a dental um, vision and physical or medical visit within the first couple of weeks of, of enrollment. Um, this slide, actually, we've learned so much about reporting over the past year, and we're starting to report this on a rolling 12-month basis because of the claims lag. Um, so yes, it appears, you know, last quarter, this might have looked about 35%, but actually, when you look back six months, um, about 60% of our members upon enrollment within a couple of weeks are getting those appointments. So we're pleased to, to be able to kind of provide an update to this data based on um, just now having a year's worth of, of claims and, and data for the SCAL program. Um, so that, of course, we want to get to 100%, but, but um, working with our care management team. We're also working to improve that routine visit and adherence um, doing working to set up some on-site mobile services at our Sky residential uh, facilities or residential facilities in which our Sky members um, are placed. Um, also, doing uh, continuing our incentive our incentivization for providers, um, and also incentivizing our Sky members for those dental, physical, and vision um, appointments within that first 14 days, as I mentioned before. Um, also, um, immunizations, one thing that we've um, deployed is a mobile unit equipped with a medical grade freezer um, to, to hopefully, um, you know, enhance the, the access to immunizations and, and working with our pharmacy partners and, and provider partners to set up some programming around that, um, some clinic days, and then just that multimodal outreach, uh, reminders, education, postcards, you know, text messaging. Um, I know there was also some, some old business related to COVID vaccination rates. Um, this is Q1, I believe, of, of 2021. Um, and as you can see, uh, between the ages of five and 11, those eligible enrollees for the COVID vaccination, um, our rates were 12.4%, about 30% for ages 12 through 15, and about 35% for that age 16 to 21 or you know, transition into adulthood age. And as you can see there, we have some, some incentives around this. Um, again, that mobile unit partnering with pharmacies for on-site vaccination efforts. Um, and, and again, just you know, as much information and education as possible. I'll stop sharing and um, hand the ball to the next. Anthem. Before we kind of move on to the next MCO, does anyone have any um, questions? All right, it doesn't seem like it. Sounds good. I think we can move on to Anthem.
This is Stuart Cox with Anthem. Um, <clears throat> apologize, we don't have a slide. Uh, did we have anything uh, from our that was submitted prior to the meeting uh, from our team? I did. I do see um, on our page that there's um, some slides. I could share them with yeah, you. Yeah, you could please share those. I have a general update here. I'm the QM okay. director, uh, Stuart Cox. Uh, we have a population health domain leader uh, man, uh, on our team that uh, leads our uh, COVID vaccination domain. And uh, if you could share those slides you have, then uh, we can take a quick look there. Aaron, do you want to help? Yeah, give me just a second and I'll pull those up from the last meeting. Thank you. Real quick, our overall <clears throat> top lines are we're continuing our uh, overall uh, COVID vaccination program, uh, particularly our incentives for our members and our providers uh, through the end of uh, 2022. We're planning to sustain those benefits at this time. So that's the, uh, the overall member uh, healthy rewards incentive, but also <clears throat> for the providers, uh, the uh, the incentive that's in place there. And of course, we've adjusted all our, of our age ranges for the age five and up uh, and that. We've also optimized, uh, looked at our rewards and uh, for the type of cards we offer uh, uh, for the members to uh, help to make it more appealing uh, to a wider age range and a, a wider demographic uh, for the, uh, the rewards there. Um, I don't have our uh, rates. Uh, were those available to pull up? My computer's trying to open the presentation. One of, the, one of the other things we've done is implement <clears throat> with our value added benefits, uh, transfer transportation support. We know that that's a social determinant of health uh, challenge and barrier that's been out there. So we've actually implemented uh, you know, uh, additional uh, use of gas cards and other incentives to help uh, break down the barriers for members to be able to get to those vaccinations. Uh, I will say this, as far as redemption rates, uh, we did uh, had data through the first quarter and we continue to stay relatively strong for the incentives uh, through the first quarter. And again, our vaccination incentive is uh, based around the, uh, the first two immunizations and not the booster shots in that. So uh, we did see through Q1 of 2022, uh, some uh, member incentive uh, incentives there. And uh, we did, we were able through our uh, digital outreach to see that there is some polarization still. There are some members that uh, <clears throat> expressed uh, some some challenging feelings about the COVID vaccination overall as well, and uh, we're concerned and we're looking at this and you know we uh, think it may be something with the other MCOs to look at, but the possible effect that uh, uh, that the pushing uh, or the promotion of the COVID vaccination may have had on the other childhood immunizations as well. Uh, so that's something we're getting as we get more data in uh, to wrap up to look at first quarter and then as we sustain through the second quarter. Yes, so it's Stephanie. This is the slide deck we went over in March. So I, I didn't realize we were going to be going over COVID again on this tag, but on this meeting. These are the only presentations that I have that were from last month or from the last meeting, excuse me. Yeah. And that's what I was saying. I didn't realize we were going to be doing COVID again because we, we just did it in the last meeting, but that was our, I think slide six has our overall COVID. Uh, update on there from from back then that we reviewed. Yeah, I think our goal was just to continue the conversation since COVID still a thing um, and just making sure that we have updates, any new updates that you all have shared or anything else that you yeah. want. We'll, we'll actually be able to update this. Our analyst uh, for this has been out on paternity leave actually. And so for a few for the entire first quarter, we'll have this updated and we'll be able to provide this back. So we'll be happy to do that. That would be great. Thank you so much, Stuart. 
Um, well, overall, I was just going to say that we're, <clears throat> I mentioned some of the challenges. We'd like to continue to pursue that in the, in the dialogue to see if other MCOs are experiencing uh, similar um, feedback about the vaccinations. And again, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, with the, the other childhood immunizations, uh, that there isn't any, um, uh, any, aren't any issues with those related to perceptions or, or feelings about the COVID vaccination. Any questions for Stuart? All right, I think we could go into Humana. Um, do you, the, is there a Humana member on? Yeah, hi, this is Kathy Stevens with Humana. Um, we didn't have any follow-up questions from our March presentation, um, so did not prepare a slide for today, but we certainly can prepare slides moving forward if that's something you would like to do in each meeting, or if there are any follow-up questions now, I would be happy to take those back and get that information back to you. Yeah, certainly. I think just having ongoing information around you know, vaccination rates, numbers, um, that would be helpful booster shot numbers, um, Dr. Grisby or others, I don't know what would be a, more meaningful. Is there anything else that we, we want the members to, the MCOs, I should say, to come prepared to address? I feel like just getting a sense of how many kids are, are getting vaccinated and if there are barriers in certain areas versus other areas, do we see a difference in rural areas versus urban areas? Are there diffi any difficulties getting access to the vaccine in, in any certain areas? Anything that the MCOs are aware of that we may not under, you know, that we may not be aware of. Right, uh, we can update the slide we presented in March and we can update that before each children's pack if you like and, and send that over. Yes, thank you. I think that would be really helpful because I feel like this is going to be an ongoing issue. Okay. I don't think COVID is. I, I apologize. I didn't realize that it was for each tax. So my apologies. No. If I don't feel like the young. I no, I know. Today. If I could butt in for just a second, um, the MCOs are likely not prepared due to the fact that the agenda didn't hit the website until a little delayed after it normally does. That is something that I have been trying to work on with all the tax and getting those agendas out so that the MCOs are prepared and the DMS staff is prepared for old business and they have the opportunity to ask if they need to bring new stuff uh, under old business. So that's something we're working with uh, MCO members. I wanna apologize for not having that out to you sooner. Um, that is something I am working on. No worries. Um, I'm happy. We're happy to do the slides. Um, and I apologize again for not being, uh, not understanding if that was for this meeting as well. But we will, we will be ready for the next meeting, I promise. That sounds good. Maybe what we could do is, Erin, um, after this meeting, uh, you, Donna, and I could connect and just jot down what the requests are. Um, it sounds like we want MCOs to come prepared with utilization or just numbers around um, well child checkup. I think that's important as well with prevention visits and then also COVID um, numbers as well. And then also looking at the regional differences or just some gaps and barriers. So I think that's an overall request for all MCOs. So maybe um, we could just touch base after this meeting really quickly um, and just hang on just so we're all on the same page and we could shoot an email immediately after the meeting. That's great. Erin, would that request be coming from you then with the criteria or would that be coming from Angie? Well, typically that is on the agenda and that's why I like to get oh, it okay. on the website 10 days prior. Um, that way, if you do have questions, typically the MCOs reach out to Angie who reaches out to me. Okay. We were going to go ahead and start working. Me, as long as you copy Angie so she's aware. <laughs> All right. No worries. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I guess so we don't um, waste too much time on, on each of the MCO saying that they're not prepared. Is there any MCO that has any updates that they would like to share since our last meeting? 
that might be the most efficient. Hey, it's Jessica with Passport. I know that we had not provided COVID data, so we sent that, I think, the day after the TAC through formal inquiry from DMS to you guys. Do you have it? And if not, I pulled up what we sent, and I can screen share and give the latest update from last week's data as well. I don't have it, but I don't know if, and it could be that you've sent it to me, but I haven't looked. I haven't gone through all my emails um, in the last day or so, but um, Aaron, do you do you have it? My apologies, I was answering an email. Can you ask that one more time? It's okay. I can just screen share my hack. It's no big deal. Thank you. You're welcome. Hang on, let me grab it. So, because we did not present on COVID last time, and we apologize for that. We didn't realize that was part of the ask. Um, I went ahead and sent the data um, to DMS for you all um, in March, and you can see our breakdowns here in terms of vaccination rates by age. Um, we are seeing the natural creep up in our 5 to 11 population as of last week's data set. We were at 16.3% of our population. Um, we are seeing a real steady hold with our 12 to 20 year olds. Um, so we only saw an increase of 0.6% like, um, between March and last week's data set for our 12 and up. Um, so again, we're seeing that really slow incremental increase with our younger members. We understand the hesitancy that caregivers have. We're really aware of that and sensitive to that and trying not to overwhelm them, but still remind them of the opportunity. Um, so we hope that we will continue, continue to see that creep, but I know we're still not touching even the state or national averages with our Medicaid population as a whole. And likewise to Jimena, we are happy to prepare a quarterly side. If we could get, if we could know what's gonna be on that list further in advance than the 10 days that it might be posted, I know we're very used to the formal inquiry process from tax. Um, we're in, you know, we go ahead and send that information in advance, but we are happy to continually prepare updated slides on preventative care for our EPSDT population and COVID vaccinations. Thank you, Jessica. That's helpful. Um, so I guess the Moving forward, is there any other MCOs that might have an update that they would like to share? Mahak, this is Divya, yep. this is Dr. Kaner with United Healthcare. First, congratulations. Is it thank you? Is it okay to derail your meeting and say congratulations? <laughs> no, you're totally fine. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Glad you're back. I hope it was wonderful. Um, from from our perspective, there is one update I'd like to give as it relates to children, which is about moms. KHP along with Kentucky Foundation. Dr. Cantor, I can't, Dr. Cantor, I can't hear you any longer. I can't, yep, can't hear no. you. Kentucky Foundation, or no, create a focus group interviewing. No? Oh, dear. No. Let me stop my video. See. Can you hear me? Yes, we could hear you now. Okay, okay. So I, uh, there is a focus group with pregnant women to help understand their hesitancy around COVID vaccination. And I think it's pertinent because these are moms who are gonna have babies who turn into children and grow up. So it was interesting that their primary source of information is coming from their doctors or their significant others. They're busy, like a lot of moms, busy taking care of their kids, so they're not see, able to uh, look into the news as much, perhaps. And that 
then led to the conversation of how the providers are talking to the patients, our members. And of those women that were vaccinated, the common theme was that the doctors spent a fair amount of time with them to talk about their individual need for why that person who's sitting in front of them should get the vaccine versus some physicians, some providers who were simply saying, um, who are simply saying, oh, you can get it if you want to. It's okay. It's up to you. A bit more nonchalant. So the call to action, which we're doing our part, and I think Department of Epidemiology with Dr. Harrington, trying to get that message out again to the providers of the importance of having a detailed conversation with the patient about why it's important to get the vaccine. The, page, the focus group members were also more focused, more concentrated on what the ill effects of the vaccine were going to be and less concerned about the ill effects of the infection itself. And they didn't understand how the vaccine works when they're pregnant meaning that their body is making antibodies and the baby gets the antibodies and the baby doesn't get the actual vaccine. So that's those were some big takeaways and everywhere where I can get this message out to anyone who's willing to listen, I'm always happy to give that. And like the other MCOs, we will be able to give you an update on those requested asks for the vaccination rates and the access and all those bullet points that you've asked for. We'll, we'll have that next time as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cantor. A quick question that I had was, are there any solutions that you guys are testing out or trying to test, just debunk from these pregnant women um, or anything that recommendations that you all feel that this TAC should discuss? I think pediatricians play a role in this as well because they're talking to the moms and so recommend same message. Why is it important to get the vaccine? Why is it important to not get COVID? It's, there's a lot of COVID fatigue out there. I know I have it. And, and so it's still important to not get this infection. The long haulers, what does it mean for children if they get COVID? I don't know that answer, but the best thing that we do have in our toolkit is to get the vaccine. So having pediatricians get this message and be willing to talk um, to the individual needs of that child and family. I think that's the biggest takeaway. That sounds good. And I'm wondering, um, are other MCOs hearing that same message? And if, if so, maybe that could be a part of the conversation for next our next quarter meeting. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to chime in right now and just share if they're hearing the same thing or they, they aren't. Um, it would just be good to hear from you all as MCOs. So it sounds like the focus study that was done is very reflective of what we know from all of our national data on hesitancy um, and maternity and other populations, but it's nice to hear that, um, that Kentucky is matching what we hear from the national level. And as a result, we've we already had implemented things for especially our maternity members in terms of the education that our our care management team for maternity um, has been doing. So, thanks for that update, Jessica. Anyone else? This is Stuart from Anthem again. Yeah, just we did hear some verbatim feedback uh, from our outbound messaging. Uh, we would analyze some of that uh, input, and there was hesitancy around uh, visiting offices, even as late as uh, the first quarter of this year um, through that. It kind of relieved uh, last year, but then it came back again. But the, there was expression that uh, folks felt it was maybe challenging to take their children in for uh, any vaccines with the threat of COVID. Um, TAC members, do you all feel like we should probably discuss this in a more robust way next time we all kind of get together? It would be great to have the MCOs kind of present any data or national study or any other information that they have on this, and then maybe we could come up with some plan of action or recommendation. Yeah, 
I don't know how everyone feels about that idea. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel like they may be privy to information from their members that we're not getting even as providers. Um, so they may be they may be reaching out to families that aren't coming in and getting that information. So that would be helpful. If there's something we can do to encourage folks to get their children in or decrease the barriers, I think that's gonna be important for us to know. Sounds good. All right, any other MCO updates around anything that we've discussed so far? Okay. Um, so moving on to new business, I know we've we were slated for a conversation around impacting the impact COVID has had on dental visits and dental care. Um, are MCOs feeling confident on this topic? Should we continue to proceed with this or, or should we hold off until next meeting? This is Tabitha from WellCare. We can gather that, that specific data for you around the dental visits. We don't have that prepared, but we sure can have for, for the next meeting. Okay. Is that how all MCOs kind of feel right now? Yeah, ditto for Passport. We were unaware that the TAC had requested this data. Okay, that's not a problem. I just don't want to call out everyone individually. Same, same, then... for Anth same for Anthem. Okay, I'm making uh, a running for humanity. We didn't realize it was a deliverable today. Okay. But having said that, I, we are concerned about dental visits as well. Same kind of feedback, we think, with children and access there as well. Okay. Um, that works. I'm capturing a whole list of for next meeting um, that we can connect on. And so hopefully after this meeting, we'll connect with each of the MCO and provide you with a list well in advance for uh, July's meeting. Hey, Mahek, this is uh, Adam Rich. Hey, Adam. With United Healthcare. Yeah, hey, thanks. Um, you know, uh, same thing. As specific as you can get, uh, we'll, we'll 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 dig in as far as you like. I don't have anything specific today, um, but I I did want to from from our um, uh, the the Kentucky Coalition Oral Health meeting. I thought that was very telling uh, that with the the KPCA presentation that they had there and ex expressed that their mobiles and school clinics were seeing uh, carries rates had doubled. And that their emergency uh, and urgent needs had gone up 50% just since they've been what they were observing since they'd been back in the uh, in the schools and had the clinics open again. So uh, the need is obviously it's obviously had an impact. COVID's had a big impact on on, on our, uh, our our kids and our our youth as as it relates to dentistry. And, and, and you know we're working at looking for multiple avenues to make sure we're getting these kids in and, and seeing because. We do understand the, the importance and the gravity of the whole thing, but it's it's definitely going to take a, uh, a it's going to be a mountainous task to get things back to the baseline they were before COVID. I completely agree, Dr. Rich, and I think um, what Dr. Rich is referring to is work that we've done with providers, um, various providers across the state, kind of gathering just anecdotal um, information around what the impact has been. But um, it's helpful to have the data to back it so we know what the actual impact is. And so what we could do is maybe request some numbers around urgent dental needs um, and also to see if like caries rates um, have been increased or not. I don't know if that's, Dr. Rich, do you have a suggestion if there's anything else that's more specific that we kind of need to hone in on? But to me, it sounds like carry rates and urgent visits. And, and carries rates from a diagnostics perspective is going to be very hard to capture because it's okay. not a, a bill, billable item. You can look at treatment, but for exams, it's it's, it's just more about how, how, you know what what we're seeing is just comparison from where we were 
two years ago with what was normal rates for, for members being seen, you know, percentages to where we are now. I think that's really the, the biggest comparison we're going to be able to get from our claims data. It's going to be hard to capture. Like you said, it's going to be anecdotal. Or it's going to have to be something that 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 the provider actually, you know, did on their own. It's not something that would come necessarily from that, except for the urgent treatment care needs, like you said. So the urgent and, and just in the comparison of, you know, how many visits were actually a getting versus what, where we were last year with our preventive and our diagnostic visits. Mahakas, Jessica, I would also say that, you know, with the USPSTF kind of more firmly recommending um, fluoride varnish, you might be curious to have us look at that data, only because I keep looking at it all the time right now. But, um, you know, that's something that, again, with COVID, you know, that's that's something that can be provided through multiple settings. So it might be interesting to look at that zero to five population and how that's coming. That's a great idea. And also I think we could look at um, sealants as well too. All right. So I think we have a list of um, data points that would be helpful for this next um, meeting in July. I think we could move on to um, returning in person. Um, Erin, do you have an update on that or? I do. Um, with us not having a quorum, I don't know if you can technically vote. I, I'm not 100% sure if this is something you have to vote on, but I can give you an update and we can always put it on the agenda for next month when we have some more members on. Um, we have the equipment up and running. I have learned how to use it. Uh, we have the option of offering still a hybrid because I know there are some people who do travel and would prefer not to make the trip to Frankfurt, depending on how far that could be for some of them. Also, one of the downsides I have seen is it's very focused on our long, and I'm going to use my hands like a fly, some very long corridor table. So uh, we would have to have most of the people in the conference room on one side of the table, which I believe would still require a Zoom link for all the people who, you know, MCOs. I know sometimes there's several of them from each MCO. So it may have to be something that we kind of, um, obviously with it being an open meeting, we have to make sure it's available for whoever wants to be able to attend. So there will always be a Zoom link. So it might be something that we can uh, maybe table to the next meeting when you have a few more board members to figure out where you guys fall on that. Um, you know, myself and if the court reporter comes in person, we can always hide in the corner. We don't have to <laughs> necessarily be on camera um, when we're not speaking. So just kind of an idea of where that's at. And so if you guys just wanna uh, discuss that now or if you wanna table it until your next meeting, um, get a little more feedback from a few members, that's up to you. So legally, do we have to meet in person or is, is Zoom still an option to continue? So from my understanding, it is still an option to continue from everything that I have. And, and if I'm wrong, someone will correct me um, that we still have that option as long as we're... Um, what am I trying to say? As long as we're hitting the open um, meeting requirements and whoever wants to be available um, can log in. That's why we have the Zoom link on our CHS website. So anyone in the public can access that. Um, so as long as we still have that option, as far as I know, we are not required to come back 100% in person. If that changes before the, the next meeting, I will let you know. But from my understanding, um, being on Zoom is still an option. Are there any TAC members that are physically located in Frankfurt? I don't know, to be honest. I'm not really sure. I know on some of the other TACs, we had a member who lives about three and a half hours away. Um, so I know there are some members throughout the state that do live several hours away. So I think that's why we're kind of leaving it up mm -hmm. to you guys per TAC. I, from my understanding, there's no TAC members that actually live or work in Frankfurt. Um, we do have several members that are in the far west or far east, um, which 
that's why they prefer the virtual option. Um, I think we can maybe have a more robust question or conversation next time. Um, and hopefully everyone could join us and we could push that, hey, it's virtual, so you should be able to make it. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's that could be the one of the main conversations um, or at least the main um, business side of the conversations that we need to take care of for July. Okay, sounds good to me. All right. Um, moving on to Mac meeting representation. Aaron, do you want to talk about this? Do you want me to talk about it? Typically, the chair talks if they're going to be at the MAC or talks um, if they need someone to fill in. So will you be available? I am not available. That's when I'll be out. Um, so I don't know, Dr. Grisby, what your availability is. I'm actually in clinic that day. I think okay. that's a Thursday. So that's my regular clinic day. Okay. And Erin, it's okay if we provide written information, correct? As long as the MAC has the, that written information. Are you referring to a recommendation? Well, just an update from our, from our TAC. You can send it to me and I will find out for sure. Okay. That's not a question I have been asked before. So I will, that'll be a new learning thing for me. So I'll find out for you. Okay. Cause I could draft something before I head out. Um, that way they have information by, I could, you know, give them an update that we met today where we didn't have a quorum. These are the topics we're going to cover next time. Um, and our goal is to have a quorum so that we have recommendations for that. That shouldn't be a problem for me to draft up. And um, any member can represent your. your okay. So if one of the other two members that are on today can be there, they can also represent your TAC. Okay, great. I don't, I know, Dr. Smith, you're, you probably have patients yeah, at that time. I, I do. I've already got a full patient schedule on that day. Sherry, are, are you available at all? I, I am not that week. Okay. Yeah. So I'm. Aaron, I'm happy to go ahead and draft something. And if you don't mind sharing it with the MAC members, if that's allowable, I would appreciate that. Yeah, go ahead and send it over to me and I will okay. verify with Veronica um, okay. if, if that is allowed or not. And then I'll let you know for future reference. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I'll make sure that it's on my calendar for every other, um, any of the other ones. All right, so the next meeting that I have on our schedule is July 13th um, from two to four. I'm not sure if there's anything else on the agenda that we kind of want to discuss at this time. I know um, if maybe the TAC members want to stay on for a little bit longer so I can go through the, the data requests for the MCOs, that way I have it all, all spelled out. And then also, Aaron, if you could stay on for for another five minutes so we could talk about this data request, that would be helpful. Yes, ma'am. All right, is there anything else that we need to discuss before we adjourn? Doesn't look like it. Well, thank you all. Um, hopefully next meeting, we'll have more robust conversation um, around the data and, and much more. Thank you.